Welcome back to Fire to Fork. Today I'm going to be cooking myself some lunch. Uh, a fairly extravagant lunch, in fact I'm probably going to want a midday nap after this. Uh, I'm going to be cooking beef stroganoff. Uh, not the beef stroganoff you've seen before, this one's going to be a little bit different uh, and obviously adapted for camping. So let's get into it, this is a beautiful dish if it's done right and if it's not done right it is tough and terrible. So uh, I'm going to start with chopping all my vegetables which is going to be some mushrooms, some garlic, uh, about a quarter of an onion because it's just me, uh, about half a chili and I am not going to bore you with that so I'm going to turn that into a six second cutting montage. Man I love this little knife. Uh, as usual all the links to the gear is in my gear page so fighterfork.net slash gear um, and there are links to just info on everything I use. Here I have a fairly small, probably 100, 150 gram-ish um, sirloin. This is, I mean, me, I, I, I can't go past good Wagyu, so I went for a 4-5 score Margaret River Wagyu there. Um, you don't have to use that. Um, a Scotch fillet, a ribeye, a, um, an, or another sirloin would be just fine, but I just love Wagyu. So, a bit of salt and pepper on there. Excuse my voice, I've got a bit of a cold. No, don't worry, it's not the naughty cough. It's just a normal cold that Bill picked up at daycare and brought home. Now let's head over to the fire and we're gonna start with this guy. Man, it is good to be back to fire season. Actually being, being, able, to, ugh, actually being able to have a ground fire in the bush is, I've missed that, I really have. All right, a little bit of oil, that's just a, Rice bran oil, you can use like an avocado oil or a, um, any kind of a flavourless oil. And we'll just let that get hot for a second. That's probably a bit too much oil actually, I don't need that much. Be careful if you're ever disposing of oil in a flyer. fire, it is flammable, so that's going to happen. I want as much heat as possible on here, that's why I haven't got a grill plate on it yet. You want to heat that up till it's smoking. So that oil is now smoking, so we're ready to put the steak on. This steak has come out of my freezer, so it's very cold. I took it out of my freezer, put it in my fridge for about three hours. So it's, it's only just movable. It's actually quite, it's a little bit stiff. I ordinarily wouldn't do this in a wok, but it's the only non-stick non pan I have that I actually take camping. So my normal pan is a non-stick, but I want to keep the meat juice and stuff in here, so I'm using a wok. Just it, it keeps a bit of the fond, which is like the, the bits that burn onto the pan on there. Better than the non-stick, which just kind of, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but you want, you want bits to burn onto the pan. Okay, so we want this to cook on extremely high heat until it has a crust. So ideally, we only want this on there for 30 seconds, 45 seconds kind of thing. Have an oil fire. So you can see it's leaving behind this lovely juice. We want that in our in our sauce. We want this to be rare in the middle. Look, you can cook it how you want, but I want it to be rare in the middle. All right, that's probably been nearly a minute each side on good heat. It's got a good sear on it, so let's take it off. Get a grill on there, some more heat under, but not too much, that's too much. And we'll add the rest. A good knob of butter. And then we're gonna add in our mushrooms and our onion. Once these start to brown a tiny bit or just become translucent, we want to add in the garlic and I'm going to throw my chilli in as well. The chilli is obviously optional. If you don't like chilli, don't put chilli in. 
Cheeky little morning beer. No, more, not morning, lunchtime beer. It's like nearly one, so I think it's acceptable in the bush to have a beer. Now my new favorite trick, bit of um, booze. That's sherry. And let's see if we can um, give it a little flambe. Yes! Bit of fire in the pan is always good. Sherry's not as alcoholic as other stuff, so it's, uh, it's not gonna flame as much. As always, the ingredients for this recipe will be in the video description. Oh, I should also mention, I'm gonna be giving away a book. So there's gonna be a code word in this recipe. If you watch through and see the code word, oh, sorry, smoke in my eyes. Um, I'll be giving away one of my cookbooks uh, to, the per so, to a random person who comments that code word. The last two weeks winners, I haven't actually announced yet. So two weeks ago, winner is here. One week ago, the winner is here. So make sure you guys contact me and I'll send you out a book. Now into here, we're gonna add some sour cream. You should do this off the heat actually. So looks about right. Give that a stir around. And a little bit of um, thyme leaves. Yeah, that's enough. Let's have a look, see if the color looks right. A little bit more sour cream. Add the sour cream slowly and off the heat. You don't want it to go into a boiling mess then it will split and stuff. All right, that looks good to me. Let's let that reduce. Might be wondering what happens to the pasta. Well, this. One pot wonder means the pasta gets cooked in the sauce. Oh, is that rain? Might be rain. So you want a small pasta so that it cooks relatively quickly. I'm using a Fusellini number 28. Any kind of a small pasta is fine good to me. Now if there's not enough liquid to cover your pasta you can add in some stock or some water uh, but I'm gonna give this a crack with just the cream. Oh no this needs a bit of this needs a bit of chicken stock and that's not gonna cook properly yet. Yeah that's better. Now the um the starch from the pasta is actually gonna thicken this up as well. So it's gonna help a lot. And just chuck in a little dab of, um, well, I don't know why people can't pronounce this, but it's Worcestershire. Worcester, shear, sauce. Not that hard to pronounce, but people try and say it phonetically and that doesn't work. And it's Worcestershire. Okay, that was fun. Worcestershire. A few minutes later. All right, it's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna check the pasta for sort of vaguely, you know, see if it's al dente yet. Oh, that is dreadful. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, it's a sweet sherry, not a dry sherry. Ugh. That's garbage. That's utterly garbage. It tastes disgusting with the sweet sherry. It's like sugar. I don't have enough ingredients to do this again. I don't know what to do. Wait, do I have enough ingredients to do this again? I think I do have enough ingredients to do this again and I have some white wine. All right, I'll be back in a second. I'm gonna do the same thing and we'll try and make it work. 20 minutes later. Okay, let's try this again. This time with white wine. Good glug of white wine in there. Bit of Worcestershire. Bit of thyme. Bit of stock. And to be completely honest, I think I added the um, the what's the name the sour cream a bit early. I think it was gonna wasn't gonna go as well as I hoped. So I'm gonna leave that out for a second. Pasta is ready to go in. All right, 
right, so it's been about five minutes. Let's take this off the heat and chuck in that sour cream. So glad I had enough ingredients to do this. Okay, it's been on there for about 10 minutes. So let's just quickly chest that. Oh, yep, perfectly al dente, not too sweet. Let's go and take it up and serve it. Let's get that into the middle. I'm just gonna eat this straight out of the wok because, <clears throat> you know, I wash up. It's one serve. Tell you what, if this isn't cooked right, I'll be devastated. Oh, it's cooked perfectly. Have a look. See? Perfect. Pink in the middle. Now it's obviously cold, but that's okay because I'm going to put it on this very hot pasta. It doesn't need to be steaming hot. If you do it with two pans, you can obviously do this late, but um, look at that. Look at that. You've got perfect steak, so it's not soggy and overcooked and crap. Perfect steak, some lovely pasta, a bit of flat leaf parsley over the top, and that is ready for, uh, that is ready for some gratuit. I'm doing well. <coughs> that is ready for some gratuitous B-roll. Right, that took a lot longer than I hoped for, but let's see what the result's like. That is rock solid. Absolutely rock solid. Now, when you taste the pasta on its own, it will be a little bit Worcestershire-y, actually. So it's a slightly sweet, slightly tangy. The beef really offsets, offsets that and you need it. It really, really works together. What a shit show, but a great meal. Goes well with beer, let's see. Goes pretty well with beer, but I think it'll go better with white wine. Hold on a sec. Goes better with white wine, but still goes well with beer. All right, thank you so much for watching that absolute amateur hour episode i hope you enjoyed it i hope you like the fact that i left all the bad bits in i like people to learn from my mistakes i do this a lot and i still make mistakes all the time so i like to show them so that you guys can learn from them as well if you don't like my mistakes probably go to a different channel because this is not going to be the one you're going to enjoy <laughs> all right cheers guys oh, i'm so hungry now it took far too bloody long